Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to and welcome to worship at Carlock United Methodist Church and West Memorial United Methodist Church here in lovely Etowah, Tennessee. Now hear this call to worship. Come, take refuge in the Lord, for God is good. Come, rejoice in the Lord, for God will provide peace for you. Come, open your heart to the Lord, and you will be given blessing. Let us pray. God, our healer, give us the courage of blind Bartimaeus to cry out to you when we are in need. Give us the wisdom of Job to know when we have overreacted and our cause is lost. Give us the confidence of the psalmist to sing your praises and magnify your name. Grant us the wisdom, O oh God, to seek from you what is of real value, <clears throat> what will truly make us well, what will truly make us whole, what will truly give us bliss. Amen. And now you may sing, Blessed be the ties that bind. Let me pause the video now. We hear now come out to worship. We'll give our praises and concerns before God. If you have a request you would like placed on the prayer list, please email, text, or Facebook me the name and the need so I can add it to the list. Don't have an opportunity to do the prayer to silently or out loud mention a need. Let us pray. Why is it that we are afraid to cry aloud our need to God? We sit in our darkness and cry and complain about the dire circumstances that have overtaken us. Yet when given the opportunity to approach the Savior who offers us light and healing, we cower in the darkness, not daring to believe that healing and light are possible for us. The darkness of our souls invades all of our lives. It colors our attitudes and determines our actions. Lord Jesus, come and shine your light not only on us, but in us and eventually through us. Break the barriers we have erected against peace freedom, and hope. Bathe us in a light of love and we shall become bearers of that incredible light for others who dwell in darkness. As we receive this light from you, give us courage and confidence to reach out in compassion and service in your name. <clears throat> Holy God, you know the names in our prayer list. You also each need both those spoken and those unspoken. Great physician, be with those who need healing. Compassionate one, help us to show mercy. Oh my God, make us instruments of your strength. Holy one, allow us to be your hands and feet in the world. Lord, help us to recognize the joys in our lives. Great protector, be with all those in our schools this week. Holy comforter, be with those who have lost everything, including their lives during the last two hurricanes. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, I honor and glory yours, Almighty God, now and forever, as we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now you may see wonderful words of life. Let me pause the video now. Our first scripture today comes from the book of Job, chapter 42, verses 1 through 6, and then 10 through 17. The book of Job, chapter 42, verses 1 through 6, and then verses 10 through 17. Job 42, verse 1. <clears throat> then Job answered the Lord, I know that you, are, you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Here and I will speak. I will question you and do you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 10. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. 
Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 donkeys. <clears throat> he also had seven sons and three daughters. <clears throat> he named the first Jemiah, the second Keziah, and the third Kiran Hapok. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations, and Job died old and full of days. Our sermon today comes to the gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Mark, chapter 10, beginning in verse 46. They came to Jericho, and as he and his disciples, a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The word of God this day for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and message of my heart be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Here we have a healing story in the gospel according to Mark. Very common occurrence in Mark. Imagine all four gospels have various sundered places where Jesus heals those who are born blind. Mark places this particular story right after the disciples' conversation about who will be on Jesus' right hand and left hand. Basically, those who miss the point. <clears throat> I believe Mark places his story here as Jesus heads to Jerusalem to remind the disciples and us reading this 2,000 years later <clears throat> that our eyes may, what we think we see, we miss too often. We think we know what God wants us to do. We think we see where God is at work. But our eyes do not see. Paul, after the his conversion experience on Damascus, it said he had scales removed from his eyes. He could no longer see anything. And then the scales removed and he saw everything. Things he had not seen before. So they come to Jericho, a place not that far outside the city of Jerusalem, a place that Jesus would go several times, spend time with friends. It's not that far again. It's not that far. We, wife and I were there on our trip to Israel. We went to Jericho, saw the got a banana, started off a tree, went to a um, business that's in Jericho, saw the tree that Zacchaeus supposedly climbed. So that's all in Jericho. It's not that far. He, Jesus is heading to Jerusalem for the final showdown with those in power, both spiritual power, of course, religious power, and earthly power. Jesus is heading right for them. And so then they come to this crowd as they're leaving Jericho. They've been there, and now they're heading away. They're heading toward Jerusalem. 
And that's when Bartimaeus, which does mean son of Timaeus, so it's a repetitive statement, a blind beggar, that's the key here, someone who because of his disability had no family, no family support. As I had mentioned more than once, in the first century, those born with what we would call disabilities were ostracized. People were afraid of them because there was a conversation had in a different gospel about another blind man and whether that person was born blind or were punished for his parents' sin. So a lot of blindness going on, both physical blindness, like this blind beggar who now has to beg to even eat. <clears throat> Sitting by the roadside. So basically, as they're leaving town, they came in one entrance and walked out another entrance. And on the way out of that entrance, here's this blind man. Now, we're not told his age. We're not told much about it other than he's a blind beggar. So he's probably in his 30s or 40s. Let's just say that. Older by this point. But he has heard about this man from Nazareth. Somehow he has heard that this man can heal him. <clears throat> what he shouts out is another piece of this story that is very key to Mark's point in telling it. Jesus, son of David. Now remember, the disciples, three verses, six verses ago, were basically asking to be put on Jesus' right and left hand. To be put on in positions of power and authority. Jesus says, I cannot give you that because my king looks different. This blind beggar says, son of David, the same words that are mentioned in like, I think the next chapter in the Gospel according to Mark, when Jesus enters Jerusalem. Hosanna, well, he, great is who come in the name of the Lord. Blessed son of David. You see, son of David, there was a belief by the first century and had been going on for long before that, that the throne of David would be restored by someone in David's lineage. You know, in Matthew and Luke, those two genealogies that we just kind of read over and our eyes gloss over, <clears throat> that was extremely important in determining who Jesus was. Jesus is a descendant of David. This blind beggar is calling him by a name that no one else has called him by to this point. Son of David, the one who is to come. Have mercy on me. <clears throat> me, a blind beggar who has no social structure, nothing to bring to the table, nothing I can add to the universe. <clears throat> Have mercy on me. And of course, he shouted down because, you know, Jesus is a busy man who's got, who's got things to do, people, places to go, people to see. But instead of being quiet, Bartimaeus goes even louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. On me, little old me, this guy sitting beside a road who I get has nothing to offer. Have mercy on me. And where Jesus says, come here, bring him here. So now that they've asked him to come, everybody sort of gets this a little, okay, well, okay, now we got to get him presented before Jesus. we got to get him straightened up, get him set up, and take him to Jesus. But instead, Bartimaeus throws off his cloak, the only thing he owns besides his undergarments, springs up and runs to the voice he just heard say, call him here. He heard Jesus' voice and ran towards it. <clears throat> I believe Mark wants us to hear that. Two things about this story. One, this man that's blind knows who Jesus is. Number one. Number two, he also runs to Jesus' voice. He hears 
the son of David call out, come here, and he comes. He obeys the voice of Jesus, something that the disciples will have to do when Jesus is no longer here. What do I need to do for you, Jesus says. The blind man says, oh, I don't know. Why don't you just heal me? My teacher, let me see again. Rabbi, fix my vision. Change my eyesight. Let me see the world again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. I believe this story is put here for a reason. I believe it happened. But I believe Mark places it in this moment. Because Jericho is a little bit out of the way from where they were going. But anyway, I think he places it here to remind the disciples and those of us 2,000 years later that we are blind. Some We, we are sometimes far too blind. We forget who Jesus is. We forget to listen to Jesus' voice, to tune everything else out, including our own, what we see in the world, and listen to the Spirit's call. Listen to the voice of our rabbi who will take the scales off our eyes and allow our faith to make us well. For our faith to be renewed, to be revived, and the scales be taken from our eyes. I once was blind, but now I see. Those are words of the, the song, the hymn, Amazing Grace, which we'll sing in a minute. Your faith has made you well. And then as Mark's tone to do, Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. See, not only now did Bartimaeus no longer be a beggar, he's now a follower because he gets it. He understands who Jesus is and what Jesus can do and what Jesus' voice can mean for him. Are we blind as well? Do we miss those opportunities to see Jesus in the world? Do we miss the opportunity to see God at work around us? One of the things we were asked during charge conference, which we just had last week, was where have you seen God in your church? That's a pretty good answer. Things people had seen where God was at work, whether it was in worship or in the eyes of those who come to the food pantry or in the, the gifts of our children or in the Whatever it may have been, people saw God because they could see. They were given new glasses. You see, when all we see is our own issues, when all we see is the negative in the world, when all that we see is the blindness that we have put on, God wants to take that away from us. God wants to remove the blindness from us. God wants us to see the world the way God sees it. And so that's our challenge. Is to find our blind spots. Ask Jesus to heal us. To remove those blind spots so that we see the world much more clearly. Jesus healed Bartimaeus. Jesus can heal us. Jesus will heal those who ask to have their blinders taken off, to see like Jesus did, to love like Jesus did, to embrace the world, a world that, by the way, Jesus knew was going to kill him. And yet he still said, Bartimaeus, you, your faith has made you well. May it be so for us. Amen. And now you may sing Amazing Grace. Let me pause the video now. And now hear these words of blessing. Darkness has been banished. 
sight has been restored. Your lives are reformed in Christ's love. Go now in peace to serve with great joy. Bring the love of God with you so that the light which has brightened your life may shine for others. Go now, beloved, to serve. And all God's people said, Amen.